And if we bring it just quickly back to Australia, a number of injuries. Biggest talking point was Nick White. He's now been stood down from all rugby activity for the next 12 days. The whole situation seemed to be a bit of a mess. You were there. What What's your take on the whole thing? Well, just my feeling when I saw um, <clears throat> when I saw the incident, and it was mainly the replay of Nick White's head hitting Josh van der Fleer's knee, because um, I kind of focused on him after he tried to make the tackle on, on Mac Hansen, and we thought it was an Ireland try. It was a foot and touch, and he looked that one to me looked just like he's he kind of banged himself off the ground a little bit. Um, and that's a kind of a day's one that you're not really overly concerned about. But for me, the feeling I immediately got, um, the reaction I got off the Josh van der Fleer one was, I'd seen him kind of crunch down, uh, kind of, and, and he wobbling backwards a little bit. And then when he sta- stood, he wobbled a bit. And on his face, and I watched it back a few times, he kind of, he doesn't look like he's, he's he just looks dazed. And I think at that stage, and I've been strong on this for years, and um, I played the game, and I would have been the classic example of someone who wouldn't come off. I wouldn't want to come off. And, you know, up to a number of years ago, we had coaches thinking, you know, try and dust them down a little bit and get it back on. And that, that was understandable. But I think what's happened with the, you know, the, the stuff around Alex Popham and... Um, uh, Steve Thompson and players like that who've had unfortunate um, issues from from concussions in the game and real concern there. I think I've kind of gone to the point that even if we're even if you think there's any slight chance, I think obviously they have to go off and be assessed. But when they show some symptoms like that, I just think it's um, it's 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 time to leave them off. And he's a very good player, Nick White. He's a really important player to Australia. Um, but I think obviously what's transpired is the the match day doctor who um, who basically said he was watching the first clip of 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 that attempted tackle on Mac Hansen, and that when the game restarted, he wasn't watching the second one. But I think the Australian doctor there, and I and when I look at back at it again, when Nick White is kind of hunched down. Um, he he kind of wobbles backwards. Ben O'Keefe said, "Well, he's he's wobbling. Uh, we need to get him off." You could then hear, you could then see the actions of the medic and the doctor speaking into the the mic. The pictures then went to Dave Rennie, who's talking back to him. You presume we're not a hundred percent sure. At that point, I think you know it's all reactive. It's like doing commentary. It's very difficult sometimes to kind of absorb everything that's going on. But that's my feeling from the start and it hasn't changed now. And obviously I think the situation around um, the match doctor watching a replay or, or watching back the video clips, I think at that point he's got to make a decision to watch the player. The play is started. He needs to watch the actions of the player and see if Nick White, yeah, got the line outs perfect. He's fine up to that point. So the first day, one I have no issue with as regards, he shouldn't be removed then because you watch the player and he looked fine. He looked like he had that zip. Uh, caught the ball perfectly, made the run, then get the second bang, and that's the one where I think he should stay off. He should, and that's my opinion. He should stay off there and uh, not come back on. But um, we obviously heard what you said on Saturday night. Player welfare is so important. Now, have you had a chance to reflect on things, and has your opinion changed? Look, mate, the the, the player was taken from the field. So, so if we look at what the system, and look, I'm totally in agreement with Quinny. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to stop. I'm not trying to put players on the field when they shouldn't be. Anyone with a head injury has to leave, and should be kept off. And that that is. The, so if we look at that, the system worked. He was removed from the field. What is what? What I, my point is as a coach. I trust the doctors. So if my doctor every every team I coached, I did what the doctor said. The doctor said the guy's got to go off or a guy can't play. I didn't question it. I didn't say, mate, we've got to strap him up, get him on, we can't. It's that I never never once did that because you've got to look after your boys. You've got to look after your players. My point was, why did he go back on? And I just felt I'm not in a situation to judge the doctor. If he did his – so Parecki gets injured, the, the Australian hooker, and fails his HIA test and rightfully stays off the field. That is correct. That's what the system does. So the match day doctor had done his done his job there. 
if the if he, if White comes off and then passes his HIA, what what does the doctor do? So so Quinny's saying, and, and there's a lot of argument, and I get that. He showed obvious signs, maybe he should stay off. And did the doctor miss that? The, the, the point I'm getting at is we've got some science there about HIAs. It's really hard for us as commentators of the game to go against science. And, and I'm very reluctant to do that. I do not want any player on the field that's had it head injury. Air play should be kept out of the game. And I was very, very surprised Nick White went back on. My, my point was I was asked to comment on it. I said, well, he's passed his HIA. We've got to trust the science. And I still believe that's that's what we have to do. We we can't because if if we're saying Parecki fails the HIA and stays off, that's correct. White passes. What what, what is the doctor's what what's the alternative for the doctor to and that and that that's that's the situation we're in. Obviously, I think that the wrong it it see it seems it pans out that the wrong decision will be made. But how what what other process is there? Except the science that we currently have, and I think I, it puts I, all of us I, in a difficult I, situation. I and I, I, I know what you're saying, and I agree. I agree that there's no. I, I don't. I don't think any coach would tell a doctor who's saying this player should not go out in the field, keep that quiet, send him back out, or he's going back. No coach would. And I, and and I, I think I think that's where your argument a little bit got lost in in translation. If 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 you allow me to say that respectfully. Because I, I knew where you're coming from. Absolutely, we trust the doctors. We trust the doctors both ways. And I saw Dr. Anna Falvey going on to the field in, was it 2018 or 17 or 18? It could have been 16 when Ireland played um, Australia in Dublin. Ireland defended a five-yard scrum. Conor Murray received a knock before before that in a ruck or previous two. He's getting ready to defend that scrum. At this point, Conor Murray's like, He's that extra back row. He's so strong. He's so good at tactics. And I saw Anna Falvey, who identified it himself, looking to get in touch with the fourth official and the, and the touch judge to get the referee's attention, to get Conor Murray off the field. So we've seen loads of examples, and I think that's, that's important to acknowledge. There's no coach wants to endanger their lives. I think in that adrenaline rush in that moment, you'd love to say, God, you'd love to be getting the news from the doctor that he's cleared, he can go back on, and you want to get him out there. But I think the problem here is when you have, um, and this is this is where, and 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 it's 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 something that kind of bothered me, is that if I was that player and my team doctor comes on and he's addressing the situation from with me, he's checking on me. And he sees me because you can see the team doctor when Nick White kind of stumbled backwards when he was in the crouch position. And then when he got up, he's trying to hold his hand and he's talking into the mic. So he's obviously saying, you got to get him off. He's in bother. He's seen that actually right up close. He's the one then who really should, in my opinion, take it out of the independent match doctor's hands. There's, and he should say, we don't. We're not going to do a HIA here, um, Nick. I know you want to go back out in the field, but look, let's err on the side of caution here. Jake Gordon is ready to go. Leave, let him out there. Let him do it. That's what I think. I think the Australian doctors here could have been better in what they were doing. Too, so, Alan, you're saying as soon as you see that stumble, that kind of little stumble, just, right? It's caution. You see from, it, yeah, the side of caution. From the pitch. And we'll see, these guys are getting monitored and they're up close and we're having debates about this and there's cameras everywhere and there is doctors. But, you know, we have to try and go and reassure parents that go out and send their kids out playing games right across the world that the coaches of these teams, amateur underage teams, will see, if they see any slight little bit of a stumble, and look, we can all get up and be dazed, and you can't, you may not be deeply concussed, but you might be just a bit winded or whatever. If you get a bit of a shock to the system and your head flips back, you can be concussed, but you know, there's some of them there you can dust yourself down, you're grand, and you're fine. But look, the reality is because of the dangers in the game and, and the messages we're trying to get across is. We want people to remove those those kids where there isn't those camera angles and there isn't that aftercare immediately there for people. So, um, look, it's one that just everybody can be a bit better on, I think. And 
look, if if I've said this and it's the same with any team, um, sometimes if it's your best player in the field and he's in that situation, um, we want coaches actually making these decisions as well and, and being on their mic saying, look, get him out of there. We've got someone, bring on Jake Gordon and, and you know, so we still have a bit to go on it, uh, but I think, you know, having spotters there and the independent match doctors and what World Rugby will do. And, and and to be fair, Matt, you got a lot of flack at the weekend, but you have been someone who's been, you know, pro uh, the zero tolerance around head high shots and people flying into rocks and shoulder charging. So it's not as if you're, you're saying the game has gone soft. But I think it was lost in translation a bit. We do need to back the doctors, but we need the doctors in this situation to get some help from the from the coaching team and say, look, let's get the player out of there. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll disagree with you there. I don't think the coach should have anything to do with it because coaches get a motive and they want to win. And I think in junior rugby in Australia, I don't know in Ireland, the referee, if, if in a junior game, the referee thinks a kid it's got a bang, the referee is off and that kid's not allowed back on. And it's so the coach can't say, oh, he's okay, bad luck, mate. So the kid, all the way along the athlete is given uh, the best support we can. It's not the coach, it's not about winning, it's it's not about more points in the opposition, it's about what's, it's about safety for the kids. And I think in the international game, having an in, this is why we've got independent doctors. So the coaches can't say, oh, look, he's okay. But it's it's and and to be fair to the Australian doctor, no, no, I think you, I think you're picking me up wrong there. I think yeah. if it comes to that situation where the independent match docs are mix, mixes misses it, I think I would be encouraging coaches yes. to say not yes. getting back on to say, look, get him off. He's yeah. staying off. No, no, you I get you. I get you. If you're a coach, Matt, if you're a coach, Matt, and you have, you know. 50 50 decision and selection, like your two halfbacks, you're you going to play this nine or that nine. One of them starts, he gets the head knock, and you know that you've got a guy chomping at the bit to get on. That would help you, you know. Obviously, Nick White is a very important player and um, stuff like that. But I'm just saying, we, uh, we've we had cases of coaches a number in the last couple of years, not, not sure. that recent, but in the English Premiership. At one stage, I remember Steve Diamond talking about, you know. A couple of these players, AJ McGinty was one of them for sale, and he was talking about, you know, they were ruled out with HIAs and not let back in the field, and he was frustrated and he cost his team. So I'm just saying in general, I think we need more coaches as well to kind of speak out about this and be of that opinion. It, look, sometimes it's difficult. People's jobs are on the line. Winning that test match is fine margins. But I'm just saying, Dave Rennie and his coaching team are watching. They've got that on monitors there as well. And I think if they jumped in, so there's a number of people who could have solved this problem for me. Ben O'Keefe should have said, I've seen him wobbling, he's off, and, and I, I don't want him coming back on. Okay, that may be strong, but, and I'm open to, to the argument of that, the Australian doctor who comes on, he is the one that's right beside him. He sees that stumble. He needs to send that up to his coaching team saying, look, he's not, he's gone, that's it. And then the, the last piece of it is the coach is buying into that. And not, you know, not like if I, if, if it was the first one, Matt, where he was down days and he went for a HIA there, there's every chance he's coming back out onto the field with a spring in his step and he's probably two or three minutes in the dressing room. So look, it's, it's ultimately um, the player welfare and the message this sends out is, is really important. And it's kind of been proven that when the match doctor sees the footage after the game or wherever, he's now standing him down for 12 days. So his, that system needs to be better then, that, that that independent match doctor makes sure he sees every piece and whether he needs an assistant with him watching the game or whatever, um, that would, would, would have solved this problem straight away. Well, yeah, Matt, we said it needs to get better, but I want it, you to have a, a last say on it, Matt, just so you can speak there. What do you think needs to get better? Well, well, it's hard to believe that a player's off the field for 15 minutes. So it's not two minutes, it's not one minute, 15 minutes, and the match doctor hasn't watched the whole thing. Because what happens is, is the, the Australian doctor walks off and immediately uh, the player, in this case Nick White, is taken from him and goes into the, the, the care of the independent medical staff, right? So that is a major flaw 
from that group of, of medicos to have not seen that. Now, then they take him in and they give him his HIA and he passes, which is staggering because, you know, that this whole thing is designed so that doesn't occur. So I, I guess my point is we can't lose faith in the medicos. We can't lose faith in, 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 in trusting science. And all through this, because I've had a lot of concussions and I've coached and I've seen this, we were not looked after. We would get concussions. We were not taken off the field. We were then given a beer after the game and we're back in contact training on the Tuesday. I mean, what was done to us is outrageous. I don't want to see that done to anyone. I don't want to see that done to anyone. But the, therefore, it has to be not coaches that ha are in this process. It has to be purely scientists. Now, in this case, it obviously turns out the system has failed because they haven't watched the video. So that just means the system has to get better to support that doctor and that they need to, to, to other people. They might, as you say, Quinny, they might need other people there because he's missed something. So here's the doctor trying to do the right thing. You've seen that first one. His head, his head hits uh, uh, Mac Hansen's hip. He goes to ground, rolls over. He shakes his head, gets up. He's okay. I agree with you. It's the next one. He sees it. Now, the referee is looking at that. Someone needs to tell him, mate, you need to look at the second one as well. And that's not hard. That's not hard to do. So we, we can't lose faith in the system, but the system has to keep getting better. And I would say to you that across um, the, the November Internationals, my experience of it, the system has worked. That, that one, it obviously hasn't worked. But we, we, we can't lose faith in science, and we've got to stick to the science the whole way through.